In today's busy and hectic world, I think some of us don't even realize how overwhelmed we are until we have an opportunity to take a second to breathe. And that's exactly what happened to this next couple here in Victoria when they built their tiny house on wheels and escaped from city life. G'day Derek, how's it going mate? Hey, welcome, nice to meet you. Thank you very much, nice to meet you. Hey Jeff, how's hey, it going? Hey man, it's going well. Welcome. Thank you very much. Your home is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. First off, what was it that inspired you to build a tiny house on wheels? Well, I'd say the intention has changed many times over the course of the last nine months, but mainly just to have a creative project. I love designing and creating things. So I wanted to create something from the ground up and meticulously design every square inch. And so this was kind of the perfect project to do so. We're originally designing it to maybe be an Airbnb, but we had the idea in the back of our head that it may be a possibility we might move into it. So we designed it for us to love it. And then over the nine months of building the project, we kind of became a little bit more attached to the project and a lot of things were happening in our life that just it kind of fell into place and made sense for us to move into it. So it shifted and now here we are. I think the idea of tiny living or small living came to us while we were living in like a shoebox while we lived in Toronto. And for me, it wasn't the fact that the space was small, is that it wasn't designed properly. And I just saw all these opportunities for how it could be designed better and the space could actually just be more useful. So I think that kind of sparked then. And then we were just kind of tired of living in the rat race. And that combined with living in a shoebox just made us start to think outside the box and how can we create a life that we actually love and we're okay with this small space. I think that's what living in a small space taught us is that it's not the fact that it's small. You just have to make the most of it and make it suit your needs. This year's all been about simplicity and how can we simplify our lives a little more, you know, letting go of the city and letting go of our business and moving into a smaller space that's more economically friendly. That has been a huge philosophy for us this year. And so we're just trying to continue to embody simplicity in all aspects. And what was the process of building the house like for you? Do you want the honest answer? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, it was stressful. There was a lot of times where we, you know, wonder what we were doing and how do we get ourselves into this kind of stressful mess because Derek and I are the idea people. He's the designer. So we had this idea, this great big idea, and we didn't realize that taking that idea from concept to fruition was going to be such a journey. We originally wanted to do a lot of it ourselves, but with other things going on in our life, we were in the process of selling a business. We didn't really have the time to invest into building a tiny home. I know you have your own and can understand how much work goes into each detail. Yeah. And in the end, hiring people was what worked best for us. We're really meticulous people and having people skilled in their trades come in and do a perfect job at everything, we really just rest better with that. We are in here all the time, staring at every little nook and cranny. So having it done perfectly is a really big value for us. Yeah. So it worked out in the end. And now tell me about this property because your parking space, we're in pretty much downtown Victoria right now. Mm -hmm but it looks like you're just in the middle of the country. It is, we really locked out. We posted an ad looking for a space to move the tiny home once we decided this was gonna be the right direction for us. And a couple reached out to us, I think within the first couple of days, and they just resonated with our post and our energy. And it almost didn't work out a couple of times because they weren't gonna be able to get us the electrical or sewer, which was a, a must for Mr. Jeffrey here, which is fair. In the end, they ended up putting a ton of money and a ton of work into getting the space ready for us, and we couldn't be more grateful. Like, it's a protected bird sanctuary we overlook, and uh, for moving from downtown Victoria to have this is just incredible. Absolutely. Having this kind of outlook, it's really the tiny house dream, isn't it, being able to find a parking spot like this? It is. It's everything we've really ever wanted. We just moved off a really busy road, so to come to this, it feels surreal. And so the home, what size is this one? It's on a 24 foot long trailer and then we've got a foot extension on the front uh, which is where we've put a little extension in our kitchen and then some storage in the master and then a foot and a half on the back for the utility so technically 27 feet. In addition to the house you've also really done a lot with the landscaping around it haven't you? Mm -hmm. Well we've actually only been here a month so we plan on doing a little bit more but Jeff and I built the deck which is definitely a critical part of living in a tiny home because this is where we primarily entertain and yeah. This is where we do our stretching and reading and it's kind of our living room. And then I just finished building a little workshop which is kind of where I keep all my tools and all that kind of stuff. And uh, eventually we'll have our fires over here but it's a little dry in BC right now so we won't be doing that right now. So yeah, we're really, we're really happy with the space and 
got a couple little plans for the future as well. And then the look of the home is really beautiful as well, how you've got the black metal offset against the, is this cedar? This is cedar, yeah, tongue and groove cedar. Great. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of cedar, as you'll see as we go into the inside. I had two design concepts I really wanted to play with. One was really rich, masculine tones, which is the exterior, obviously black and a rich cedar. And then a little bit lighter tone inside, which kind of feels more like a sanctuary, a little bit more zen. Uh, some more plants and whites and uh, lighter toned cedars that's not stained. So kind of wanted the duality of the exterior and the interior to feel like different spaces. Well, the exterior looks really great. It definitely has that strong, bold aesthetic, and I cannot wait to check out the sanctuary. Come on in. Let's go. This is great. Walking into this space, you can definitely see your love of timber. 100%, <laughs> yeah. Well, I called it my cedar sanctuary. That was one of the main design intentions and to keep things as natural as possible. Obviously you can't keep everything natural, especially with like painting the shiplap and whatnot, but all the cedar is naturally treated. Fantastic. And one of my favorite things about cedar homes is the smell when you walk mm -hmm. in. Do you smell it? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Yeah, that's always the first thing people say when they come in, which we kind of get used to it after a while. It kind of just becomes our normal, but everyone comes in. <sighs> Oh my God, that smell. So it's kind of a nice invitation for people when they're coming into the tiny home. Yeah. yeah. And you're right that the interior of the home is definitely contrast against the exterior because in here you've chosen much lighter colors mm -hmm. and the whole space is super bright and airy, isn't it? Totally, I, I want it to be separate but still cohesive. So you'll see like we use black accents throughout the interior to tie in the exterior, but I think if we would have went as dark in here, it would have felt a little bit too small. And we both work from home primarily and our home body. So we wanted something that feels light and airy and zen, zenful. And now over here, we've got your kitchen space. And this definitely looks like the kitchen of people who love to cook. You got it. Yeah. Well, Jeff's the cook in the family, so I'll let you talk about the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. So our decision to where to put the kitchen was, it took a little time because initially we were going to put it in the middle. But I thought, well, why not just have a little bit of a wraparound kitchen and have all the counter space for all of our appliances and all of the space to make the meals that we like to make to entertain our guests. So that was a huge value for us. As you can see, we have a full-size fridge. We've pretty much got a full-size stove and we have all the space for our food processor, Vitamix, coffee pot, kettle, juicer, you know, you name it. So that's where our main value was and we're really, really happy with it. Yeah, so we put the washer dryer combo unit in the kitchen because that gives us this extra cutting space, which is really important to us with prepping and juicing. And then as we talked about outside with the extension on the trailer, we put this little bay window in the kitchen just to give that extra light. You know, no one wants to feel like a slave in the kitchen. So the more enjoyable you can make that experience, the better. And then this is something just small, but we put a little, it's called a desk drawer at the bottom. You can fit these instead of a kickboard. And that gives us room for a junk drawer, which even in a tiny home is very important. And then having exposed cabinets was really a value for us as well constantly putting dishes away. So it's nice to just make that a little more useful. Very nice. And then you've extended the countertop and created a bit of a table here as well. Yeah, so that's our dining table. It's not secured, you can move it. So that gets moved over to the bench over here when we've got more guests and that becomes the kitchen table, but we also use it as an office space as well. And then what's going on down this half of the home? So this is where we, like we said earlier, we'll pull the dining table over to if we've got multiple guests. So we can actually, we've had five people here for dinner. Yeah. Which is pretty amazing that this turns into seating for five people. And then we're eventually going to build a back on the couch there so that it can be more of a couch and you can lounge and have a nap. And then of course the storage was really important. So everything's custom in a tiny home, as you know, we couldn't just like slap a couch against the wall. We really wanted something custom. That's where we put all of our shoes and then our office supplies under the last bit. And then our yoga stuff is stored between that and the barn door. And then over here, it looks like you've got a little workspace as well. Yeah, so we both primarily work from home. So Jeff usually takes the little nook over there and I work from the dining table. And it just gives us that little bit of separation of space that you need in a tiny home. Some people might think that's crazy to only have eight feet of separation, but just having those little nooks really helps us get into our creative process and gives us that space that we need. And then in the stairs here as well, it looks like you've managed to build a lot of storage in there. Mm -hmm. The stairs in a tiny home are definitely very essential for storage. We actually thought we were gonna have to miss out on a lot of the things we love and needed, but everything we love and needed fits into the home, which we're shocked by and really grateful for. We originally were gonna put our clothes up in the extension we built into the master loft closet area, 
but we realized that wasn't going to be very practical with needing to stand up and get dressed and whatnot. So it's our clothes in the first two and then some extra spillover from kitchen storage in that. And we even have a full size vacuum that fits under the bottom stair. So again, we fit everything of value in here. And then what do we have through the bundle? This is our bathroom over here. Let's come take a look. Yeah, so this is our bathroom. We had to sacrifice having a bathtub, which was difficult for us because in the winter months we love to soak in a nice bath. But in any case, we have this beautiful um, dark tiled shower. Again, that's kind of a nice little masculine touch. We've got a nice shower wand in there as well. So this is kind of our, our oasis for now. And another one of the key features was trying to figure out where we we're gonna hide our cat litter box. Mm -hmm. So we found a nice little nook we built these custom shelves in the bathroom and we're able to tuck it underneath and put a little litter carpet catchers for all the litter that comes off the cat's feet. So it's a perfect space for them. And then you've got the flushing toilet in here? Yes, yeah, having a sewer was a high value for us and we're really lucky to have landowners that set it up for us. So we have, yeah, full flushing water and that makes the experience uh, really enjoyable for us. <laughs> Fair enough too. Yeah. And then a really good size vanity too. Yeah, yeah, the vanity, it's a floating vanity. So we have some storage underneath and it has two pull out drawers, which has more than enough space for all of our bathroom accessories. So we're really happy with it. And then what do we have above us here? So this is what we call the social loft. It's kind of our living room or also like our guest bedroom. So come on up the stairs, I'll show you. This is such a nice space. I really like how you've created a bit of multifunction in here with a super comfortable bed for guests, but also just a nice chill out hangout area, relax and watch some TV. You got it. Yeah, that was kind of the intention. Like how can we make this space usable for us on a daily basis? So this is kind of our reading nook over here and then our living room at night. But then we, you know, we often host family and friends. So we've got a queen size bed here to host as well. So it's a perfect multifunctional space for us. Mm -hmm. Really nice to be able to do that. Yeah, this is actually one of our, our, the favorite room in the house. It just has a good energy. It's interesting because it's almost designed exactly like our master loft, but they have complete different energies. So we often find ourselves coming up here, you know, once we've done our morning routine and reading, or this is where our TV is or some of our sound healing stuff. So we spend a lot of our time up here when it's not nice outside. Yeah, yeah, there's amazing views too. So you can read a book and look at over the bird sanctuary, which is super peaceful and just a gift in general. So we really, really love this space for that reason. And you've got this wonderful big skylight in the center of the room as well. Definitely. So there's kind of two things to mention about that. One is that when you're in the center, it gives you all this extra space in the loft for your headroom. But if you were to cut that out, you'd get an extra four inches of space throughout the whole loft. So it's something interesting to think about when you're designing a loft, how you want the head space to be used. We really wish we would have had it open, but we kind of cut some things in the budget when we were building. And that was one of the things that we cut out, but airflow in the tiny home, I can't stress enough is very important. So mm -hmm. I would highly recommend having some of your loft windows open. And then we have your sleeping loft over the other side. Yeah, that is our master loft. So you can just kind of come down the stairs and onto the ladder and hop across. Do you want to come take a look? Absolutely. This really does look like a very serene and relaxing space to be in. Yeah, it really is. Again, we have this beautiful view of the marsh and the birds. And then if we lay down, we get the nice, beautiful sky in the day. And at night we get to see the stars. And so I think it's important to ex be able to extend your space in a tiny home in any way that you can. And for us, we get all this beautiful nature. So why not enjoy it? Yeah, I was actually thinking as I was falling asleep last night, how important it is to have a skylight in your sleeping loft. Because I think if you were staring at the ceiling so close to your face, it might feel very enclosing. So to have the four by four skylight window, it just makes the space really expansive. And falling asleep to the stars is obviously uh, a great way to fall asleep too. It really is. And then it's lovely in here as well that you've been able to create this nook space for some books and obviously a place for the cat. Yeah, that's where the cat hides away. This is where uh, we have some of our sound healing technology and then we've got tons of extra space for our book collection to grow or our plant collection to grow. So yeah, we're honestly super impressed by how much we've been able to fit into the space. We thought everything would be completely gridlocked and we wouldn't have any room to grow, but we've got room to grow. So you've only just moved into the tiny house. You've been here for about a month now. Mm -hmm. How's it all working out for you? We've actually been really surprised at how quickly we adjusted to the space. 
as soon as we got in and set up all of our, our belongings, it just felt like we were in the right place. And we have three animals and somehow they've all found their own nooks as well. And Pluto's become more of an outside dog since we've lived here, which we're really grateful for because we have this amazing space for him to run around in. And so it was, came really naturally for us. Mm -hmm. Night two, I think we we're like, this feels like home. It's one of the huge advantages of actually getting to design and build your own home that you do get to create a space that perfectly encompasses you. Exactly. Yeah. And that, again, was the original intention of building this is meticulously designing something that works for us from the ground up. Yeah. Having this home is to both of us, I think, a gift at this point in our lives. Uh, it means being able to just be present and slowing down and just sinking into more, more to who we really are beyond these busy patterns in this matrix program that we were living in before. So it's, it's really important to us and I think we're learning what it actually means to us as time goes on because it's only been about a month that we've been in here, but we're realizing how special it is to be in a space like this that you've designed yourself and to have the time to settle into a new way of living together has been really beautiful for our relationship as well. And now let's talk about the cost of building this tiny house. What did this project actually take to realize? Yeah, so originally our budget was 50,000, but that was with us gonna be doing most of the work. By the end of it, it came to 91,000. And that was getting probably 80% of it done by contractors. Fantastic. Yeah. The end result of this home is something that you can both be incredibly proud of. It's a wonderful space. Stepping in here definitely does feel like a bit of a sanctuary. Thank you so much for sharing your home with Thanks me. Thanks for coming, it was nice to have you. Yeah, it was a pleasure, thank you so much. Thank you. Derek and Jeff have done such a great job with this home. And I think what I really like about it is that they acknowledge that life can be hectic and difficult sometimes, and having a place to come home to, to offload and just to simplify life can be so important. And that is exactly what this tiny house does. <laughs>